Hey everybody, this is Ben. Welcome to another episode of Film and Vinyl here on Cinema Gulp. And this is my first ever biopic episode focusing on the most dangerous band in the world, NWA, and the film that tells their story straight out of Compton. <laughs> I look at the release of this film as any fan of the mega hip-hop act of the time would, with familiarity. Not of the lifestyle of the members of the group, of course, but of the era for which they existed. I was an observer, along with countless others I knew, of the culture. Through all its scary, undeniably raw, and unwelcome tendencies, the era shook the earth for the first time in my life and showed many of us what true anger for the system really looked like. A system that didn't necessarily know what to do when the abused and aggressive youth would remonstrate its written bylaws. NWA marked the first ever music movement that I was ever a witness to, and it was something terrifying in a magnificent way. As the film opens and you hear the words, You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. A certain energy is manifested. I remember seeing this movie in the theater. There were plenty of people my age and older, but the vibe of the younger kids really helped elevate the experience. It was great to see the younger generation wanting to learn more about this band something that they have not seen in their youth thus far. The music industry doesn't allow such raw, obscure emotion outside of the average love ballot anymore. That's not a direct knock on this generation itself, but perhaps on the industry's unwillingness to take chances and its need to adapt to the technological changes of the time. A more difficult time in many regards, but also a more simpler one. Straight Out of Compton is a competently made, extremely energetic and entertaining piece of cinema. Though taking some lighter turns on the darker facets of the group's history and the individual flaws of its members, the film is so well made, it's hard not to think of it as perhaps one of the best and most engaging biopics of all time. There's no biopics that are going to be even close to 100% accurate when it comes to the portrayal of the subjects of focus. For instance, it completely glosses over the group's sexist behavior and treatment of women. However, that's not what they focused on. First and foremost, make a good movie, then worry about the rest. So many biopics about musicians fumble on fact versus fluff in order to make a compelling story. I felt that way about Walk the Line, a movie that was not accurate to Johnny Cash's life or personality in many regards, and didn't take the risks it should have. Hell, even Johnny Cash in writing his own autobiography was much more brutally honest about his behavior than the movie let on. Luckily for F. Gary Gray, there's already an amazing story to tell with N.W.A and he does an absolute fantastic job. Yeah, boy! The performances of the film are for the most part spot on, at least from what I can come up with by looking at individual interviews. The casting was great. Even the smaller cameos like Snoop, Suge, and Tupac all owned their parts and never did any of it come off as goofy or laughable. Corey Hawkins, who's probably jumped out biggest in the mainstream since the film's release, plays Dre with ambitious brutality and edge. He's intense and charming when he needs to be, while staying quite level-headed through most of it. His portrayal seems to be what we were always led to believe about the man as he pushed his way through the industry, ultimately creating a dynasty of hip-hop talent and becoming one of the most successful producers of all time. Sure, with Dre's massive involvement with the development of the film, he does come off rather candy-coated. O'Shea Jackson Jr. plays his real-life father, Ice Cube, and is quite serviceable. Granted, his appearance is almost identical, which is what helps his performance along nicely. He prepared for two years to portray the role of his father, partially because Ice Cube didn't want the appearance of nepotism in casting. He's good and shows raw emotion, especially on stage, which is where Ice Cube really let his emotions out. But his one-on-one -on -one scenes, especially ones with the great Paul Giamatti, don't hold as well and you can sense the level of immaturity in his acting. Not his fault. Still, I have to say, I don't think anyone else could have pulled it off any better and you can really see how hard he's trying. Then again, maybe I'm just being hard on him because Ice Cube was always my favorite member of NWA and I wanted to see that intensity that we all saw in Cube's face during videos and live performances. And who doesn't love the Ice Cube face? No, I never saw NWA live. But on VHS I did, O'Shea does pull off that intensity nicely. And since then, he's come a long way as an actor, stealing scenes in Aubrey Plaza's comedy Ingrid Goes West as a Batman enthusiast. No Batman talk. 
What am I supposed to talk about? I don't know these people. The big star and the glue that keeps the film together so perfectly, in my opinion, is Jason Mitchell as Easy e in a vulnerable and haunting performance. He owns the screen and gives everything he's got to portraying the extremely flawed yet intellectually superior member of the group. The film does not shy away from showcasing Easy's major downfalls, which ultimately became the downfall of NWA, and Mitchell handles it all with a magnetic energy and gravitas. His character is dangerous yet funny and willing to learn more about others in order to perfect his craft. You always got that sense from looking at real interviews of Easy e Studio gangster. Somebody that's not real, they go in the studio and all of a sudden become hard when they used to do dance music. He's a genuine depiction of a true hip hop artist at the time when many people didn't even know what that meant. Mitchell is amazing here and dare I say gives an Oscar worthy performance, which he did not get. The other two members of the band, MC Ren and DJ Yella, are pretty poorly sidelined here, but I assume that their involvement with the group was more or less the same. Ren gets a moment here and there, especially in a scene where they gather around to listen to Ice Cube, now solo, trashing NWA and Ren in particular. Easy dick, it's not like MC Ren shit. DJ Yella is literally just an occasional comic relief character with not much dialogue and not many scenes. Paul Giamatti is always brings it here as Jerry Heller, NWA's real life manager and business partner of Easy E. He could have just played the part as he did earlier in the year as Brian Wilson's manager in Love and Mercy and been a one note villain. But here he's layered and complicated. The real rumors of how he divided the group do come full circle here. But the film and the performance also suggest that early on, Heller really was intrigued and interested in doing what he could for the group. The film is not perfect. There are stretches that lag, moments that seem forced, and obvious issues taken out for image purposes. F. Gary Gray really shines as a director and pulls off a lot of covered ground in two hours and 25 minutes. The introductions to each member are interesting and subtle, yet carry weight. Seeing how each member started out and who they were to the group was such a treat as a longtime fan. It's also refreshing to see how funny the film was. It had a ton of emotional depth at its core, but a lot of it was humor and fun. Watching the group record in studio, which was a major focus of the first hour, was fantastic and really what I wanted to see the most in the film. The film reminds us that these guys were just kids living their dream and having fun doing it, even if it was based on their hatred of cops. The pacing is great for a film with such a long running time. It's a hard edge piece of filmmaking, something not just anyone could pull off and certainly something that not just anyone would be willing to try. NWA was cemented in culture for years to come. It showed me in a packed theater full of teenagers none of which grew up in that era, that NWA will forever be mesmerizing and underneath all the exterior toughness was something much greater that brought even the most unlikely together. The film was released on August 14, 2015, and the film scored the biggest musical biopic opening ever with $56.1 million beating out Walk the Line, thank God. On a $28 million budget, that sounds pretty good to me. The film would go on to gross 161 million domestically and 201 million worldwide. That is incredible. Music supervisor Angela Lewis got her start as a music clearance consultant on films like Clerks 2 before moving on to music coordinator on the musical Nine. A classically trained pianist and violinist who graduated from USC's Thornton School of Music she started her career in the music department at Miramax Films. During that time, she was involved in music licensings for both film and trailers, soundtrack marketing and score production, working on such projects as Chicago, Cold Mountain, and The Reader. She has supervised many popular films in her young career, from American Reunion, Neighbors, Pitch Perfect 2, Ride Along, and Sisters, before lending her expertise to Straight Outta Compton. It's clear that her influences lie greatly in the hip hop genre. She went on to supervise the soundtracks for Jordan Peele's Us, as well as the hilariously underrated satirical Andy Sandberg vehicle, pop star, Never Stop Never Stopping. She's a huge voice in the music supervision industry and is currently Senior Vice President of Film Music at Universal Pictures. 
Wow. One of the most interesting things about the soundtrack of Straight Outta Compton is that the actors were brought in to re-record the entire Straight Outta Compton album with producer Harvey Mason Jr. to help them get ready for the characters. Boy, do I want to get my hands on those recordings. The actual scratching when Dre is on the turntables was done by none other than DJ Jazzy Jeff. When the movie went into its pre-production phase, it inspired Dre to secretly record his first album in 16 years. So on August 7, 2015, Dre released the album Compton, a soundtrack by Dr. Dre, exclusively on Apple Music and on iTunes Store at first, then later was released on digital music platforms and on CD and vinyl form. Though not an official soundtrack to the film Straight Outta Compton, Dr. Dre said this album would be inspired by the movie. Being released a week prior to the film's premiere, part of Straight Outta Compton's massive opening weekend had to be attributed to this album. It debuted at number two on the US Billboard 200 charts and number one on iTunes charts. Dre donated the royalties of this album to building a new performing arts facility in the city of Compton. An official soundtrack album to the film entitled Straight Outta Compton, Music from the Motion Picture was released on January 8th of 2016 by Universal Music Enterprises. It took a little while to come out. It features songs mainly by N.W.A., but also features Ice Cube, Easy e Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Stephen Arrington's Hall of Fame. Flashlight by Parliament was actually sampled by Tupac. Weak at the Knees would be integral to Cube's solo debut, while Dre, Tupac, Snoop, and most recognizably De La Soul would sample Funkadelic's astonishing Knee Deep. Most of the tracks here are taken from the debut, skipping the less enjoyable aspects of the years after Cube's departure, when they almost became a parody of themselves. Unfortunately, there was no new music performed by the band. But obviously, with the loss of Easy e a lot of people would find that controversial anyway. Now let's talk about Straight Outta Compton, the vinyl record. Obviously, it's my vinyl recommendation of the episode. I have the 20th anniversary edition, which consists of band member bios, new artwork. The album was released in 2007 by Priority Records and consists of two 180 grams albums. This is one of the most influential albums of all time. It's one of my favorite records when I was way too young to have even heard it. The lyrics are intelligent, poignant, raw, hilarious, angry, honest, and straight up fed up. Tracks like Dope Man, Express Yourself, and the self-titled Straight Outta Compton truly changed the way I looked at music in general. The record told me that true frustration and true artistry mixed with talent and the courage to stand up and say how you feel can result in something that will change the world. And this record arguably did that. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Film and Vinyl. Sorry it's been so long, but I'm really glad I got to do one on Straight Outta Compton from 2015. As always, please click like, subscribe, tell your friends, hit that bell. We're trying to grow this community slowly but surely. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We have lots more film and vinyl coming to you and a lot more new episodes coming to the channel of Cinemagold. So stay tuned for those. As always, thanks for watching. Although I don't know where I'm headed or remember which way or direction or which lane that I should get in or which exit to take my but if you see me in the street, don't bother honking at me until we meet.